So we're talking Lich Guard today, you can get a unit of five of them for $55 and they're going to be one of your elite selections from the Necron Codex. Now they're going to be 25 points per model and they come with two different profiles. So the first one is the Hyperface Swords with the Dispersion Shields. Now those Hyperface Swords a strength 6, minus 3 AP and only 1 damage. Now you do also get the shields which are plus 1 to your armor save as well as a 4 plus invulnerable save. So you've got a 2 plus armor save, 4 plus invulnerable save as well as that hyperface sword that we just mentioned. Now the other option is the war scythe option. Now there's no shield here but you get a strength 7 war scythe, minus 4 AP and the damage this time is 2. What do you use these for? If you're taking the swords and shield you're kind of using them to hold objectives, holding ground and holding key areas of the battlefield. Now ideally with the swords and shield you're going to be playing some sort of objective secure dynasty such as the Nehilak dynasty or going custom with the Eternal Conquerors dynasty code so that they're going to have objectives secured. Now if you were taking Eternal Conquerors you can also have the 6 inch pre-game move with Relentlessly Expansionist just to get them further afield, get them into the location you want them to be holding an objective at. Now ways of synergizing with other units in the codex, you've got an overlord for example with that my will be done ability so that they're going to be hitting on a 2 plus as opposed to a 3 plus. They're also going to give the overlord model that lookout sir ability even with one single model. And Rakir the Traveller is another overlord type model but it's a named character this time. He applies the same sort of bonuses but also grants the Lich Guard an additional attack. Now if you were to take the War Scythe option, this time they're going out hunting, they're going out slicing and dicing and they're better off going with the Novak Dynasty as opposed to the Nehilak Dynasty because you want plus one to your charge roll and a little bit extra AP on the charge as well. Now to get them in maybe you're going to be using the Veil of Darkness Relic with another character model or alternatively maybe you want to use a Night Scythe Flyer to get them into a key location, disembark from the Flyer and yeah get into combat and start using those War Scythes. Now with that Novak Dynasty you've got a few little extra options such as the Protocol of Hungry Void to get an extra bit of strength making those Warsive strength 8 as opposed to strength 7 which is really key because going up against toughness 4 you're now wounded on a 2 plus as opposed to a 3 plus and the Disruption Field Stratagem of course is going to help this unit as well because that's going to be a plus 1 to the strength characteristics of the models so you can actually make the Warsive strength 9 if you wanted to or even those type of fade swords that we spoke about earlier strength 8 a unit synergy if you're taking the war size, maybe a chronomancer will do the trick because he not only gives a reroll to that charge roll but also grants them a 5 plus invulnerable save with this chronometron ability. Remember they've not got the shields this time, no invun saves, so take a chronomancer, you'll give them an invun save as well as the best weapon. If you didn't want the cryptet then fall back to the actual overlord model that we spoke about already, my will be done, relentless march aura, and you can even use the stratagem eternal protectors so that will grant all the models in that unit an additional attack. But for me, I'm going to be giving the Lich Guard a Planet 40k rating of 4 stars.